creating character sprites for Pokemon isn't terribly difficult. You can use any program you like, but I prefer Paint.net just because it's pretty simple to set up to use pixel art on, and you don't have to goof around with a lot of the settings. So to get started with this program, uh, the easiest way is just to delete the default canvas and then pull in one of the pre-made sprites just so that you get a nice template. So if you're editing any of your sprites, if you go under the Pokemon Essentials folder, they're all going to be under Graphics, and then Characters. So if you scroll down a little bit, you'll see that's where all of your main character sprites are, your NPC sprites, and then your trainer sprites. You can keep the sprite work and draw over it, or you can just delete it all together. So if I zoom in a little bit here, and I use the pencil tool, which draws one pixel at a time, you can see that about four pixels worth of the pencil tool is equal to about one pixel on this character sprite here. Now that is a little bigger than I prefer to draw with. You can get more detailed this way, but it doesn't always show up as well on Pokemon Essentials. So what I would recommend doing is go to resize your picture and then you just need to do about half the size to draw with one single pixel. And make sure this value in the drop-down box here is nearest neighbor, just so that it keeps the same pixelated format and it doesn't change it at all. And then if I zoom in a little bit again, you can see that with the pencil tool, now I'm drawing uh, one pixel at a time in about the same scale as the drawing is already done in. And if you do choose to use paint.net, you want to change the eraser tool over here to have a hardness of 0% and then disable this anti-aliasing just so that you get a nice clean pixel by pixel eraser. Now you can just directly edit these um, sprites, but I usually like to draw over them. So I'll just add another layer here, click on this layer, turn down the opacity a bit, and then kind of work over it. So for example, for this ranger, I'm going to go back to layer two, choose the pencil tool again, and then just make an, a, a nice outline for him. And maybe I don't want him to have a hat. Maybe I want him to have hair. So I'm going to give him some hair instead. Then you can go ahead and color his hair. I'm just going to switch to the paint bucket tool, turn the tolerance down to zero, and then make sure this is still turned to anti-aliasing disabled. And if you look at some of the other characters who do have hair, have this nice shine going in their hair just to give them a little depth and a little bit of shadow too. So I can just make this a little bit of a lighter color, give him maybe some highlights to his hair, then just choose some decent sort of skin color, and then just sort of fill in his face here. And make it a little bit darker just for some darker skin tones for the shadows. And then go ahead and draw the rest of the ranger. And then the only other thing I wanted to add is that if you just have your character use plain colors with, say, like a black outline, it looks okay, but it really does go a long way if you just add in a couple of highlights and shadows just to make it look a little bit more polished and maybe get so rid of some of the black outlining in favor of like a dark brown or something that just fits a little bit nicer into the um, picture. Now to make the next version of the sprites, you don't have to completely start from scratch because as you can see, the head is basically the same, just moved down a single pixel to make it look like he's walking. Then the only other thing that's different is just um, his body position. And if you can tell here, the second ranger and the last one are just, the bodies are flipped the lower part. So as you can see, I've drawn this nice body of the first walking sprite here. And then I can just select that body, copy it, paste it on a new layer, mirror the layer horizontally, and then move it into place. Nice. And then for the rest of the downward walking sprites, all I need to do is just copy different aspects of them. So guy here is just a copy. And then I just need to copy his face for the last two sprites. And then I can just merge these down into one single layer. So for the next line of sprites, it's a pretty similar process where you just are going to draw this guy first, 
copy paste them into this slot. Uh, the only difference is they have two different body walking positions for the first and last sprites, so you just need to draw both of those separately, and then again paste the heads onto it. And then for the next line down, it's just the same exact thing but mirrored, so you can just copy that layer, uh, mirror it over, and then you'll get the same thing but facing to the right. And then the back sprite is just the same process as the front sprite where you draw this one, paste it here, uh, just draw this body, mirror it over on this side, and then copy and paste the heads. So I'll go ahead and draw that and then I'll show you the finished result. Okay, so here is my finished character sprite. It's nothing super fancy. If you decide that you don't like some of the color schemes, like maybe the facial skin is a little too dark, if you're in paint.net you can just click this nice recolor button, make sure tolerance is 0% and anti-aliasing is disabled, uh, and then just choose the color that you do want. Let's just choose like say a nice lighter skin color here and then you can just click on the color and it automatically recolors it to whatever color you want you can also do that too if you just want to edit the color scheme of a certain sprite instead of completely redrawing it so then the last thing to do is just to save this sprite so i'm just going to delete the um, background layer that i had my reference on and then file save as And we'll make this a new trainer character, we'll call him 72. Oh, and then just make sure that you resize it to the proper size, too. And let's test him out in the game. You can change which sprites the game uses by going under the PBS folder, going under metadata, and then just editing this information up here. So the default trainer that you're going to be is TR character followed by the number. So you can just um, overwrite the existing file to just uh, make it be the default one. You can see that I've just um, overwritten it with my own character file just because I thought that would be a little simpler than changing the metadata. But instead, if I want to put my new character, which I named TR character 072, you just open up that file and then change this to 72 and then it'll load the TR character 072 instead of the default 000. Okay, so here's our custom character sprite. He looks pretty decent. I might change his back a little bit though. I'm not too big of a fan of the shadows that I put on him. So here is a sprite that I've already finished that I just want to show off really quick. Here is the running animation, which I'm not a huge fan of. I think I might change it around a little. Here's the walking animation. The surfing animation. And then the battle animation. So that's just a quick and dirty way to create your own sprites that look pretty decent, give your game a nice custom feel, and then add them into your game yourself. If you have any questions, feel free to comment them below, and if there's enough interest I might do a second part which gets a little more advanced into like tile sets and stuff. Yeah, thanks for watching and I hope you enjoyed.